My name is Asunta DeSanto. I am a core developer for Galaxy, um, working out of Penn State University. Um, I've been on the team for a little over a year now. And today I'm going to be stepping you through the rule-based uploader tutorial. <clears throat> so the rule-based uploader, it allows you to upload data sets or collections, depending on what you have, and apply rules to them as you upload them, rather than upload them just as data sets as they are, and then apply the rules, you can kind of modify them as they're being imported. And this can save you time. It can be a little bit more efficient, especially if you're you know, doing the same thing over and over again. So hopefully that gives you some background as to what it is that we're doing or why. <clears throat> All right, so this is the actual tutorial. That's what it should look like. Um, and we're just going to go through some of the basic things that you can do with the tutorial. One thing I want to draw your attention to is these data blocks with this little copy button. When you click this copy button, it will automatically copy this data. And then it's very easy then for you just to control V or paste um, the data in the upload box. That's a really nice feature. We'll be using that a bit. So you'll want to have the I, the actual um, tutorial open in a tab. That way you can quickly copy that data like that. All right. Well, let's get started. <clears throat> so this is the first chunk of data we're going to be working with. I'm going to copy that now. And then we're going to head over to the to Galaxy and we're going to upload it into the rule builder. Rule builder. Uh, first thing you might want to do is create a new history. I've already done that, but I'm just going to rename it rule based uploader. Um, and then it'll all be in one place. So from this main page here over on the tool panel is a button that says upload data it looks like a little arrow pointing up and if you click that you'll see the uploader it should start up for you like this. Um, but we don't want the regular uploader this time at least we want the rule based uploader so you just can navigate to that tab. This first one we're uploading the data as data sets and it's from a pasted table so we're just going to paste what we had from that copy block and click build. Now this is what the rule-based book uploader looks like. You can see that it has broken our data into these different tabs. We have a column header here that we're going to be getting rid of. And we have a, um, a warning up here, which is what is halting us from clicking upload. So when you see that this warning has disappeared, this button for upload should be blue and you should be able to click it. But right now it says that it's disabled because the data is not validated yet. It's not valid yet. So the first thing that we're going to do is get rid of this first row. We don't need it. It doesn't have any data that we actually need. Uh, if we tried to use it, it doesn't have a, a URL link, so it'll just break. It won't work. Um, so we're going to let me show that again. Go to filter filter first or last n rows, and we want to filter the first row, just one of them. If you had a number of data, a number of um, headers at the top here that you wanted to get rid of, then you could get rid of more than one, but we just want to get rid of the first, and that's the only one that doesn't have real data. So we'll click apply. <clears throat> so the next two things, I believe, that we're going to do to our data is add a column definition for the name and add a column definition for the URL. So our name is going to be column C and the URL definition is going to be column D, the one that looks like a URL. And that is actually what we need in order to move on is the URL. So we're going to go to the rules button here and click add or modify column definitions. From here, I said we're going to add a name and that name is column we can apply that and then we can do it again add a definition url and that's column d and once we apply that we see that that warning at the top has disappeared and we can click upload now that's what we're going to do this should create six data sets 
name these different things, and it should get that data from that Zenodo link. <clears throat> and you just gotta wait a few minutes while it uh, while it does the upload. It shouldn't take very long, but if a lot of people are um, uploading at the same time, it can take a bit. In the meanwhile, let's talk about why we should be using the rule-based uploader instead of manually editing our data. So manually editing your data is not reproducible, which means you can't keep doing it over and over again. It's not scalable. So if you have a thousand data sets and you're trying to put them all into the same collection and you have to change something for each one of them, that's going to take you a very long time. Using this will allow you to get it done like that. And it's also error prone. So when you're doing things all by yourself, you can make mistakes. I went out of order, but that's what the section says. There's also a, a link here. Why not use Excel for this, which you guys can check out for more context there. So I see up here where it says six jobs have completed and we can see now that they're all green and we can see that they have their data that was um, uh, taken from, from Zenodo. And that's a basic use case of the uploader. That's just for data sets. So now we're going to work on a collection. It does need to create a new history here, but we just did that. Maybe we'll do it anyways. Um, we'll call it simple data list. Simple list uploader. There we go. You can call it whatever you want. That doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> and the first thing we're going to do is upload the metadata from the first example, and this is important, as a normal paste upload. We don't want to use the rule builder this time. We want to do upload data, and we want to go to regular, paste fetch data, Copy that again because I lost it. And we want to paste it there. And I want to click start then. We're going to wait for that to finish uploading. We can take a look at it. It's just the same exact um, <coughs> chart that we um, had already uploaded. All right. Now we're going to open up the rule based uploader, but this time we're going to upload the data as a collection and we're going to load the data from that data set that we just uploaded. So we're going to go upload data, rule-based, and then you're going to change this to a collection. And we're no longer putting a pasted table in here. We're using a history data set. And that history data set is the very same one that we just uploaded. And you can click build. We see again that there are some warnings up here. And we're going to need to resolve all three of these in order to move forward with the tutorial. But of course, I'm going to show you how to do that. So <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do, just like last time, is get rid of this first column. Again, it doesn't have any data that we need. So there's no sense in keeping it around. The second thing we're going to do is add or modify our column definitions. We're going to be using D as the URL, just like last time, because that is the column that looks like a URL and is in fact the URL, um, except for the only difference this time is C is not going to be name. It is going to be a list identifier. We're going to go then add, modify, 
we're going to add a list identifier C. And we're going to add a URL D. We're going to apply that. Um, the type for this is a fast QSanger dot GZ. So we can go over here to type and we can start start to type that. And whenever it matches up, we can find it. You just click it and you're done there. And the last thing that we have to do is this time it's a collection. So a collection needs a name. And we're going to name it according to the tutorial. We're going to name it this. That's fine. You can name it whatever you'd like. You can name it my special list or whatever. And finally, you're going to upload them. And this time we should see that those six data sets are in one collection, one list. We'll wait for it to um, finish uploading there. And again, this can take just a little bit of time, but uh, it can also be very quick. It really depends on who else is using the same resources. And there we have it. We have our collections with our six data sets. All the information that we didn't want was stripped from them, and there they are. So that's how you create a simple list. Next, we're going to be creating a list of data set pairs. This is a little bit more of a complex collection. <clears throat> we're going to copy this chunk of data here, and we're going to be uploading it as a collection in the rule builder. The rule builder upload, we're updating as a collection from a pasted table. So we're going to do this. We don't want to clear that out. We don't. We don't want that anymore. We want collection from a pasted table. Uh, we just want to get rid of all that. I'm make sure that I'm copying the right thing. And I'm going to click build. Um, so We again have our warnings up at the top that tell us what we need to do to move forward. And let's get that data in order to, to move forward. So again, this slide up here, if you ever have a header that doesn't have you know, any valid data in it, you want to get rid of that. So that's how we're going to start here. You know, start, get rid of the first row, apply. <clears throat> um, and then we're going to go to our rules menu, select add or modify the column definition and set column C to the list identifier and add our type as well. Those are things that we just did. Efficiency, whoop, whoop, I clicked the wrong thing. List identifier, we don't have a paired data indicator. At least not yet. Um, we apply that and then down here, we're gonna do Set our type. Okay. So I want to look at column D here. Now, if you look at column D, which we've been using as our URLs, you'll see that that looks like two URLs. And in fact, it is. There are two URLs there and they're separated by a semicolon in the middle. So we need to break that up. And that's what we're going to do next. From column, we're going to select use a regular expression. And we're going to create matching group expressions using this regular expression. I'm going to actually copy this regular expression to make it easy, although this is a pretty simple one. Um, so column using a regular expression. And we're looking at column D because that is the one that we want to break up. We're going to paste our regular expression there. And we're going to do create columns matching regular expression groups. So the second radial button. And I believe our number of groups is two. Yes, that is correct. 
two groups. So this is how this should look. From column D, matching expression groups, the regular expression, which is the parentheses, the dot star inside each one, the semicolon in between. <clears throat> and the number of groups is two. When you click apply, we're going to see that we have two new columns on the end here. We've got column E and column F, and they are column D split into two different columns. So there's some information on the tutorial explaining <clears throat> how to use regular expressions um, briefly, but really dot star means any number of characters, anything inside of the parentheses, which is why, which is how it matches that up. So now we're going to get rid of column, column D. Column D is the, is this one. It has the two URLs separated by a semicolon and we really don't need it because we um, just took out the data from it that we needed We separated it out. So we can do um, sorry, rules, remove columns, column D. And then when you click apply, D has disappeared and those E and F, they have jumped over. So this is what was on the, the left hand in of that you are the double URL column and this is what was on the right side. Um, moving on. Now we're going to split our columns. Um, the odd row columns are going to be column D and the even row columns are column E. So Again, from the rule menu, we go to split column. The odd row was D, the even was E. And that's going to line these up very nicely. However, now it just looks like we have a list. And what we really wanted was a list paired. So we need to keep going forward. We need to define, it says inform Galaxy, which of these rows are our forward reads, reads and which one are our reverse reads. And we're going to do this by adding a new column using a regular expression, the underscore one or underscore two in the name of the file. So we're going to go to use regular expression again, column D. And this time again, I suggest you just copy the regular expression. It's easier to just copy it if you're following a tutorial, because if you mess up by just a little bit, you could be matching on the wrong thing. So um, <clears throat> using regular expression, column D, and we're going to create one matching group. So it's column using a regular expression from column D, create groups. We can paste in our regular expression there. I'm looking for one group. I'm just going to make sure that that is um, all correct. And it looks like it is. So we're gonna click apply. And now we can see that there's a new column added to the end here, E, which has taken the one or the two, the underscore one or two, from here in the file name and put it into this column. Um, there's an optional step here to swap the columns. I'll show you guys how to do that because uh, just to be useful. It says it's more useful to see what you're doing. We're going to swap column D and E, and that's just going to make this column with the URLs go to the end, and this column with the paired indicators come forward. That way, we can see them more clearly. They're more at the forefront there. Um, and now we're going to tell the rule-based uploader that those are our paired indicators, because it doesn't know that yet. Um, so from rules menu, we're going to add or modify a column definition. Our paired end indicator is going to be column D and our URL is column E. So rules, add or modify. We're going to add a paired end indicator. And like I said, that is column D. That is the ending that we took off of the URL. And then we're going to also add our URL. And that is column E. And we're going to click apply. And now we can see that most of our conflicts have been resolved. All that's left up here, at least, is to name the collection. And in fact, that is all that the tutorial also asks you to do. So we can 
name it whatever we want. We can call it uh, our paired list PRJDB3920 because that is what is in column A. And we can upload that. We can call it again, whatever you'd like. And when that's done, we should have a list of pairs that split up along that pair down indicator that was in the URL and matched along those. Um, again, this might take just a little bit of time. Um, while it's waiting, uh, hopefully you get through it successfully, but uh, I want to direct your attention to uh, the feedback form, which is at the bottom of this tutorial, um, providing us with feedback on how you thought this tutorial went is really helpful for us. And if you're interested in learning more about the rule builder, there is an advanced rule builder. Um, and that's down here too. Do you want to extend your knowledge using Galaxy Managing Your Data? rule-based uploader advanced, and you can click hands-on, and that'll take you to the advanced rule-based uploader. Um, hopefully that'll help you uh, understand how to, how to use this um, tool even better. Um, again, here's our completed paired list, and I hope that was informative for you. Thank you for watching this and participating. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and enjoy whatever else you have.